Oh, it's so good to be free. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Homestead Challenge. I am just doing a vlog this weekend as we are kind of working toward some more of our goals for the year. So this weekend we are going to perhaps get some local meat. I'm not 100% sure about that one. Uh, and we're definitely going to go do a local dairy farm and we're going to get some local cheese and hopefully some raw milk. Keep on watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Homestead Challenge. If you are new here, welcome, first of all. I am someone who is fumbling my way towards this homemade life. So I actually don't live on a traditional homestead. I live in military rental housing. And so not all of us have a farm. And while the goal of homesteading might be to make everything ourselves, uh, I can't do that here. So I'm gonna to talk today about local food sourcing. If you are someone who is interested in living a more sustainable, healthier, and potentially more financially savvy life via homesteading or homesteading wherever you are at, hit that little subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified whenever I make a new video. Let's just get into it. All right, so once you figure out what you can't make yourself or grow yourself at your house, then you could just go buy everything from the grocery store. But I want to talk today about sourcing everything local, and there's a few reasons to do this. My number one reason is sustainability. It's pretty obvious, but when you're not shopping local, then you have a long way to transport things. Most of the stuff in your grocery store actually travels 1,500 miles to get there, which is quite a lot, and there's a lot of energy used in not only the transportation, but the processing of the food in order to make it shelf-stable for that long, in the refrigeration, there's just a ton of energy wasted that goes into it. So the shorter it has to travel, the better. Next would be your local economy. So of course, putting dollars into your local economy is always great, but not only are you giving those people money to uh, then invest in their business, but they're also going to invest in other places in your local economy. So it's a win-win for that. Next is taste. So in order for things to travel that long, sometimes they have to be chemically altered, um, and honestly, they're just not as fresh. So fresh things taste better. So if anything is local, it doesn't need to have all those additives to it in order for it to last longer. And it's gonna be freshest for you to have the best taste possible. And finally, price. So here's the thing. It does seem expensive at first to buy things local. And the reason for that is if you're currently buying conventionally raised meats, non-organic produce and that kind of thing, if you are currently buying the healthier stuff in the store, so the non-GMO, organic, grass-fed, free-range stuff, it's going to be cheaper to buy it locally. So the organic stuff at the store can get pretty expensive, usually because it is honestly just bought less. So, you know, it's on the shelves longer. It has sometimes has to transport there. So there's a lot of refrigeration involved and the transporting and all that stuff. But if you buy it local, you can actually buy in bulk, which is super awesome. Buying in bulk is always going to save you money. So it was one of my 2021 homesteading goals this year to source food locally. If you haven't already watched my 2021 homesteading goals, definitely watch that. The link for that's gonna be in the description as well. There's a whole lot more over there. But today we're gonna to just work on sourcing local food. And I can't do it all in one weekend. This is my challenge. You know, I have the whole year hopefully to uh, do all of that. But today I sought out to just find some local meat and local dairy, and I happened upon some beer along the way, so that was pretty exciting. All right, so I wanna talk a little bit about what to look for when buying these things locally. So there's gonna be a ton more information on this along with a bunch of links in my blog post that's gonna be linked in the description box below. So after you watch this, go and check that out if you're looking for any of these resources. First up on my trip, I will take you along with me, I was looking for local beef. I actually did find a place, but we were going to eat there as well, it's also a restaurant, and they weren't taking any more people for the day for the restaurant, so we couldn't actually get the meat there because we still had to go out to eat and I didn't want the meat to wait in the car. But I actually found out later that that place, while it is local meat, it's all conventionally raised. So it is not grass-fed, non-GMO, organic. So those are all things that you wanna look for, are those grass-fed, non-GMO, organic, and free range. There's a whole nother video that could be made about why those are all best. I'll put a little bit more about it in the blog post, but for now, just trust me, 
Those are the things you want to look for. So it was actually a happy accident that I couldn't get things that day because I found out that it wasn't, you know, the things I was actually looking for. So when I got home, I found eatwild.com. So that website actually shows you all of the local places that you could find that have all of those qualifications. And a lot of those places also will sell in bulk. So that is something that I still need to look for. If you are interested in seeing my journey to find all different kinds of meats, whether it's uh, beef, pork, chicken, um, and eggs along with that, let me know if you'd like to see another video. Put an emoji down in the comments with uh, what animal you'd most like to see. So the meat was a fail. We went to a restaurant that also sells I think it's local meat, but at the same time, around here I feel like things really aren't actually local. It's hard to explain. But anyways, they weren't taking any more people. So we're going to go get some local craft beer instead. So as you saw from the video, that was a fail. But it wasn't such a fail because our local craft beer store was right by that restaurant. And we just had to stop in. beer is actually good for the same reasons as buying local meat and dairy and produce and whatnot and it can often be overlooked you know we might be putting all of these great nutrient-rich local healthy foods into our body and then drinking not such good stuff um, but buying local beer is actually best best for the economy Usually local craft brewers are very proud of the ingredients that they have in their product and are looking for super quality ingredients. I actually have another blog post all about the best kinds of beer liquor and wine. I will also link that in the description box below if you want to know more about why craft beer is the best. Also about organic wines and liquor, all of that's in that one. So that was just a fun little pit stop, but really the main thing I wanted to do today was take you with me to my local dairy farm. I was so excited to hear about this. I actually found out about it through two friends. So the best way to find anything local is going to be through word of mouth, unfortunately. I'm the kind of person that loves to just look everything up online, but we can't always do that, especially when we are looking for local farms because they don't usually have websites. This one does, however, so I was pretty excited about that. I first want to talk about the kind of milk that is technically best. So raw milk is best. And the reason for that is raw milk is straight from the cow. There is uh, no processing at all involved. And what this means is that it basically just keeps all the good stuff in it. It has all of the nutrients, healthy fats, everything remaining intact. However, raw milk, some people don't feel safe drinking it because um, you know, it's not gone through pasteurization, which can kill some bacteria that could be potentially dangerous if the cows are sick. Also, it's actually, because of that, illegal in a lot of states. So you can head to realmilk.org, I'll have the link for that in the blog post, and check out what is legal in your state. Sometimes, most states, it's not legal to buy from the grocery store, but sometimes you can buy it from a local farmer or like one-on-one, -on -one, just from a, a very small, like, homestead that somebody has, somebody has a personal cow, or there's also something called herd sharing where you actually buy the cow technically and keep it at the farm so you are entitled to its milk. That can all get very complicated. If you are super gung-ho about finding raw milk, definitely check out that website. But what I did this day was find the next best thing. So the next best thing to raw milk is actually going to be non-homogenized, low temperature, pasteurized, grass-fed, free range milk, so that's a mouthful. But what that means is it's pasteurized at the lowest temperature that uh, requirements allow. So it can kill some of the bacteria off, but it does still maintain some of that good bacteria that we want in our gut. It's also non-homogenized. In the video next, I'm actually gonna talk a little bit more about what homogenization is. And I, as you can tell, I learned a little bit more after this video was filmed about the whole process, but I truly believe that I found, you know, the next best thing in this local dairy farm. They also make cheese. It's, it's really amazing. And it's really cool to just see the cows right there. If you have kids, you can bring your kids to these farms often and they can help milk the cows. 
So I cannot say good enough things about going to your local dairy farm. super cute you just drive right up and literally open the fridge and they have all of this amazing stuff here and I didn't expect this but it's all organic super cute we just drove up and uh by the honor system bought all of our dairy and cheese for the next couple of weeks so that's cool i didn't see any raw milk and there wasn't really anybody to ask because there's nobody there but i heard that they have raw milk i don't assume that the whole milk that we have there is raw because it doesn't say it's raw so it, i wouldn't assume it is but that's something that i really am interested in looking into so we'll see, maybe next time. Miles of road just to get where you are. I wish it wasn't so far. Thousands of dollars. Right, so the milk says that it is certified grass fed and animal welfare approved, which is super cool. We saw the cows there and they just chill and hang out in the fields. And it is pasteurized, but never homogenized. So, it's not raw, but it is um, not homogenized. Except for this is. So, I'm going to have to look up more on what that means, honestly. I really don't know. So, very ah! interesting. And we're very excited about it, right? All right, so I looked up a lot more about this raw milk versus non-homogenized milk. And I know that raw milk, as I said before, is illegal in a lot of states. I don't know if it's illegal in my state, but just because um, raw milk is not pasteurized, so there's the potential for some bad things, but raw milk obviously in its whole state gives you all the greatness and good stuff from the cow. But non-homogenized milk, <laughs> Jack's still very excited about it. Non-homogenized milk, uh, basically is the least amount of process you can get for um, non-raw milk. So typical milk that you buy from the store you might be used to or the cheaper milk is all homogenized because when milk comes out, it separates into a layer with a cream on top. And in order to make it homogenous throughout, they process it so then it's all one smooth, silky drink but traditional milk actually does separate. So the milk that I got, probably have to shake it first. I'm not really sure. But homogenizing in the process is another step of processing. So it takes some of the good stuff from the milk out. So we have grass-fed, organic, non-homogenized milk. And I think that's the best that we can do for now. And I'm pretty excited about it. So we'll let you know how it goes and uh, we're gonna be drinking it for the next two days. We'll see. So since a lot of us can't do it all on our own little tiny homesteads, I truly believe that sourcing local is going to be your best bet. As I said, I have a ton more information about sourcing local in my blog post in the description box below. Please leave me that emoji and let me know what you would like to see me source next. And if you learned anything, definitely give this video a like and subscribe and we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers. Oh, it's so good to be free. Your rules don't apply to me.